Welcome back to another episode of the Casey Campbell podcast. Casey Campbell with you, of course, pleased to be joined by the head boys basketball coach at Livonia Franklin. That, of course, is TJ Hurley. Uh, welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me, man. Good to see you. Hope everything's been good for you in this last year. Absolutely. You too. Um, you know, coming off a, a division championship, first uh, first one since 2003, got to play in the KLIA championship and had a lot of had a lot of success that uh, this program hasn't seen in a long time. But uh, before we talk about and preview this year, what was it just like to experience uh, last year? Uh, I'd say, you know, obviously overall really good, but the big part of the experience is when you're going to win a lot of those close games, you know, if you're going to win the way we did, you're going to have to get lucky a little bit. And when you have guys who work really hard and band together, you're going to have some good things happen. We had, you know, in two of our biggest games on the road, uh, 10 point fourth quarter comebacks, you know, game winning shots. And those just come from guys who put in the extra work all the time. And to kind of see everyone come together for one common goal was uh, probably the best like athletic experience in my life. And hopefully it's something that they'll remember forever, but uh, mm-hmm. overall really, really fun to be a part of. Yeah. Okay. So this, uh, this year's team is uh, obviously a lot. You do lose a lot from last year. I mean, obviously guys like it's going to be tough to, re- I don't I don't know if you can replace guys like, uh, like Eric Hobson and Kevin Davis and all those, but uh, obviously you're going to certainly try. Um, but what's uh, what's uh, kind of talk about some of the guys that are going to be returning for this team and uh, what just what the last few weeks have been like. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Eric Hobson was a phenomenal player. He's over at Indiana tech. Now Kevin Davis is playing college baseball at Lansing community college. And then Adam Alec was another, you know, 22 game starter for us. So we got to replace them, but we're not necessarily thinking replace these guys and just like kind of do the same thing. We've kind of got to revamp. It's not so much replacing them. It's building a new team with these guys and working the way that we need to work. So we, we still got a lot of talent, man. Um, You know, Mitch Cronin, this will be his third year of varsity. Robbie Wynn, this will be his fourth year starting for our varsity team. We got some great leaders in them. Uh, Mitch can really fill it up. He's playing really, really well. Robbie Wynn does everything, everything, you know, rebound steals, points assists everything comes from Robbie Wynn and then we got other guys that are stepping up big time um we got some guys coming in their own like Owen Pittenger John Jasinowski I mean John's going to be a two-time all-state defensive back he's a great defender really really hard worker so we're glad to have him we got some other guys coming up they might not have heard of like Cam Webster played JV last year but he's a really talented little guard out there and then we have other guys that are trying to come into their own role like Medell Broaden Stalker Kenyon and you know, even if you don't know the names, it's trying to find ways to make everyone's skills utilized to the best of their ability. So we're not so much replacing anyone. We're kind of pivoting into a whole new team that's trying to do the same thing as last year, just in a different way. Yeah. Okay. So now, so unlike last year, this was, uh, this was actually at, during at this time of this week at time of recording, you guys, um, uh, this would be, you know, tryouts were happening this week. So, but you guys, uh, tryouts happened last week, a week early. So you know what you're, you know, you have the team set. What's, uh, what is, uh, what's this year uh, going to be like and how practice has been going? Uh, practice has been going good, man. We got a lot of focus from these guys. So it's been a lot of fun trying to stay competitive each day and all that. We think the year is going to be uh, another successful year, another solid year. Um, you know, our division as good as it can be. Most teams are returning just about everybody, so it's a little a little bit of a challenge. But uh, kind of when you see everyone come together in practice and when you see how hard some of these guys have been working, how hard some of these guys have worked for the last eight, nine months, you know, it gives you a lot of confidence. So we're really looking forward to the year and how it's going to move along. And we have some new faces with us, too. So it's been interesting uh, getting everyone acclimated into practice. But pra- practices have been tough. They've been competitive. They've been fast. Kind of everything you're looking for. Don't worry. That's uh. I'm on prep. That's a bell. It doesn't apply to me. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, of course. Uh, TJ, you are a teacher actually um, at Livonia Franklin. Uh, so, um, so going into um, uh, let's talk about that division for a second. You talked about the um, going into, you know, this, um, you know, this, this division in the East, it's a lot of competitive teams and, you know, really, really good squad. And we were just talking about it um, before we started recording, but this uh, this division is 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 going to be pretty good. Yeah, it's loaded, man, from top to bottom. So when you start talking about uh, good teams, a lot of people go right to Dearborn and Belleville, two really good teams last year, returning just about everybody. So 
Uh, when you talk about talented teams, top to bottom, you got to talk about those two. But there's even some sleeper teams that I think people don't understand will be how good they are. Uh, Wayne was a really young freshman last year, and they were really good. So now they're sophomores. Um, so you got to worry about them. If you want to call them like an underdog to win the division, they are definitely in the mix. Glenn had some kids who transferred in last year and didn't play. Um, so they're adding, you know, two new starters, two new best players right off the bat. They're going to be a lot deeper, a lot more talented. So we're going to have to deal with that. Um, when you talk about Fortson, they have a uh, division one player who just signed with central that you got to somehow stop. So that's going to be a huge challenge. Obviously Stevenson's always good. Um, they're bringing just about everyone back. So we got to worry about them. So when you go top to bottom, uh, Churchill was young last year. They're only going to be better this year. Uh, I don't know if I'm missing the team, but no, you got them all. When you talk about those teams, there's not going to be a night where we can relax, where we can, you know, I hate to say like, hey, we're going to get a couple guys in a couple extra minutes here. So every all 14 of those games are going to be battles and we're going to have to be prepared, going to have to be ready. So it's it's exciting. It's great to have that kind of challenge, uh, but it is going to be difficult. Yeah, for sure. OK, so um Let's talk about, you know, the uh, the non-conference schedule that you have, and that's pretty good, too. Uh, you obviously, you got the uh, the KLA-OAA crossover game uh, with all the KLA teams hosting. Uh, just uh, And then, of course, uh, you also scheduled a few, uh, a few more opponents as well. Yeah, so uh, we got Farmington in the KLA-OAA crossover. Uh, we don't really know much about them. Didn't know much about them from last year. It was kind of given to us, so... We're going to have to try to scout, see how they are going into that. But when we look at our other opponents, we have uh, a couple new teams we're playing. Uh, Voyager, we're really not sure how good they're going to be. We're going to have to prep for them and figure that out. Um, Father Gabriel Shard is supposed to be better than they were last year. Um, they're always well coached, so we got to be prepared for that. That's actually my alma mater, so that's kind of why uh, we always have them on the schedule. We play South Lion first. Uh, they were young. They had a new coach last year. They're returning everyone. I know they got the, the big dude, Graham Brown, I think his name is. So we're going to have our hands full there. We have no idea what they're going to be doing. Um, you know, year two of a program is when they really start to gel together. So we got to be ready for that. Um, so our non-league schedule is interesting. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, and uh, we, we just got to be prepared every game. And it's a little more nerve wracking early on because it's more about worrying about what you guys are doing well than them and teams that don't make mistakes early on win games. So we got to clean up our turnovers, our defensive miscues, all that to be ready for it. But it'll be interesting early on, um, not knowing what teams are going to have for us and trying to prep, prepare in all those different ways. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, I've got also, there is one, obviously there's, you know, there are, there are obviously big changes with teams and, you know, new team, but this is uh this is a one that's going to affect everybody and that's playing basketball in the entire country. Um, the one on uh, one foul rule are, is gone. So um, uh, I've gotten a lot of interesting uh, takes on it from coaches. Um, uh, what's, uh, what's your take on all that? Oh, man. Phenomenal rule change. Great rule change. So they're resetting fouls at quarters. They, this has been needed forever. We don't want to see a bunch of free throws. We don't want to see teams in the bonus early in the second quarter shooting one-on-ones. It's, then it puts refs in position where they don't want to call fouls. All, it's, it's a great rule change. Um, going to from one and one to directly to a bonus. I know some people have been upset because, you know, makes it harder to come back in a close game, but don't be down. I suppose like, I'm not really worried about that aspect of it, but definitely resetting fouls at the end of a quarter, I think is the greatest rule change. And when you watch college basketball and, you know, a team's in the bonus at the 11 minute mark, and you're just watching a three, a free throw fest, by the way, I, you know, me and some of our players went to Michigan State, James Madison, which was a horrible experience, but they were shooting free throws all it was it was so boring. Um, I think it'll make the game move better. It'll make uh, players better. Won't be a three free throw fest. I think every aspect of the rule change is good. And I think as it goes into the adjustments happen, other coaches who are opposed to it right now will be like, oh, yeah, it actually was good. Yeah. Um. All right. So um, just kind of talk about where you guys are. at. Of course, uh, you know, heading into this weekend, of course, uh, you got some scrimmages and before that first game. Yeah, we got some scrimmages coming up. Uh, we have a team coming in for like a, you know, control, more controlled scrimmage. We host scrimmages on Friday where you'll have teams. Uh, we have six teams coming through at every level. Etzel Ford, Thurston, Stevenson will be here. Um, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. Wall Lake Western with Coach Graves. Oh. Uh, um Man, I'm sorry. I'm drawing a blank for you right here on the sixth one. That's all right. Don't worry about it. 
you know, so we're trying to get prepared with a couple of scrimmages before the season. It's kind of crazy scrimmaging this week when I feel like we haven't really practiced enough to actually know what we're doing. But uh, if you're not scrimmaging against another team, you just kind of get flat and boring sometimes against yourselves doing the same thing each day. So I'm pretty excited to get a better, better measuring stick of where we're at than just kind of going at each other in practice. All right. Well, TJ, thank you so much for the time as always. And we'll talk to you throughout the year. Yeah, man. Really appreciate you having me on. Let me know if there's anything I can do for you. And good luck covering all these schools, man.